a galvanic or voltaic cell converts chemical energy into electrical energy through a spontaneous reduction oxidation reaction between two substances, one of which is easily oxidized and the other more easily reduced. So the setup that we have here, I have a zinc electrode that is placed in a solution of zinc sulfate and a copper electrode that is placed in a solution of copper sulfate. So the two possible half reactions here are that of zinc and copper and I would use the table of standard reduction potentials to determine which direction the spontaneous reaction occurs. And we can see here that on table 4b, since the zinc occurs above the copper half reaction, we can say that the zinc is going to be oxidized and therefore our oxidation half reaction is the zinc solid breaking apart to form zinc ions and electrons. We move down the table then to see that copper undergoes reduction where it gains electrons, the copper ions gain electrons to form a copper solution. And so what we can see here is once that is set up, I've connected this to a voltmeter to, de to detect the potential difference. All that remains to do is to complete the circuits and that is by using a potassium chloride salt bridge that has been prepared in this YouTube here. And we see that as soon as I complete the circuit, the voltmeter measures a voltage since there is now a complete circuit and the salt bridge now acts to maintain electrical neutrality. So what we find happening in this electrode over here where oxidation takes place, we know that oxidation always occurs at the anode. So the zinc is now the anode and what we can see is that the zinc solid is busy being oxidized and going into solution, which means that our concentration of zinc ions increases in this beaker over here. At the same time, we initially, the concentration of sulfate ions remains constant. In our other beaker, we now have reduction taking place. We know that reduction always occurs at the cathode. And what this tells us is that the copper ions are being attracted to the copper electrode where the electrons are moving towards and therefore the copper ions when they leave that solution therefore the copper ion concentration decreases. As a result we can see here that since the concentration of positive ions in this beaker increases we can see that this beaker would become increasingly more positive while since the positive ions are leaving this solution this beaker would become increasingly more negative which is the function of the salt bridge which we know is potassium chloride and what that allows is for the ions to flow in the direction that maintains electrical neutrality which is why we say that the salt bridge has two purposes the first being to maintain electrical neutrality the second to complete the circuit we know that the cathode is always the positively charged electrode in a galvanic or voltaic cell and therefore the anode is negatively charged. We can also express this in cell notation which says that the anode electrode is zinc solid, the anode electrolyte is zinc sulfate, the double line here represents the salt bridge, the cathode electrolyte is copper sulfate in aqueous solution and finally the cathode electrode being copper solid. We can calculate the standard cell potential Using the following formula, the cell potential is equal to the half cell potential of the cathode minus that of the anode, which can be read off this table here. And we find that we get a positive cell potential, which indicates that this is a spontaneous reaction, that in ideal conditions, under standard conditions, this should yield 1.1 volts. As we can see on the voltmeter here, it is slightly below that. That would be mainly due to a change in concentration or the concentration being below what is considered a standard condition. We can also write this as a cell reaction that says that we start with solid zinc and aqueous copper sulfate which is then converted into solid copper and zinc sulfate aqueous. If one were to leave this reaction for a long enough period of time we would see the mass of this zinc electrode decrease as the amount of zinc decreases and becomes zinc ions and we would also see the mass of this copper electrode increase 
as more copper undergoes reduction and is deposited onto that electrode. And finally we can see that the electrodes are flowing through the external circuit, that being the wires out here, from the zinc electrode, which is the anode, which is negatively charged. The electrons are repelled from that electrode and attracted towards the positive electrode, that being the cathode, where they then undergo reduction with the copper.